understand functional relations and their distinguishing characteristics, which means the rate of change, the intercept, linear and nonlinear. We're going to be talking about that today. I can distinguish between linear and nonlinear functions. We're in our notes F6. It is page 14. Please, no more sound effects. If we are looking, I can explain why this is linear. So, what is a linear relationship? In a graph, Jack, what does a graph of a linear relationship look like? Um, and a if I draw an x, y coordinate, it's a straight line. Okay. So, anytime I have a linear relationship, if I look at a graph, it has to be a straight line. That line. If it is linear, it can be going with a positive slope, going up to the right. It can have a negative slope, right, going down to the right. It can have a zero slope, right? And it could be, if it's linear, be undefined, which is our vertical. Okay? This linear? As long as it is a straight line, right? Linear relationship. Ah, so this wouldn't be a function, this would be a linear relationship, right? So this, if we're thinking this undefined one, is not going to be a function. All of these are, right? Yeah. But a vertical line is not a function. This is talking about what's a linear relationship, okay? In a graph, straight line. If we are taking a look at a table, what do you see in a table? So that x, y table, if it's linear. So it doesn't matter if your x, y is like this, or if you have an x, y table or an input output. What do you always notice in a table? What is something you could tell me about a table? Even when you look at a table, what was happening all of a sudden? Okay. How is the change? You're constantly doing what? So in our table, the change, that triangle Y, change in Y, right? So the change in our Y divided by the change, triangle X, change in X, had to be constant. We called that our constant slope. Another thing that you were doing is you were either adding or subtracting the same number each time. So when it's linear in a table, there's a constant addition or constant subtraction to our y's and our x's, right? Usually more squared divided. What's that? Usually more squared divided. Uh, there's not a constant multiplication that makes it actually nonlinear. So we're going to talk about that. If we are looking at the last one as an equation, if we look at an equation of a linear what was the equation that we used all the time at the end of the last year? What was the equation? What did it look like when you said right here? Okay, that was our limit. Okay. It could have just been y equals 2, right? That's going to be linear, right? It could have been y equals 3x minus 4. It could have just been y equals one half x. But I want you to notice about all the variables. Y is to what power if there's no exponent? First. First. X is to what power here if there's no exponent? First. First. So in an equation, you have y equals mx plus b. If you see that today, you see this equation, where y is to the first and x is to the first, that's telling you it's linear. So, key thing, your variables will be to the first power. Please make sure you write that down. Variable to the first power. This form, y equals mx plus b, yes, that is our most general form when we think of something being linear. Variable to the first power is what we want to have down in our notes. So you're going down to that next part in your notes. Most of you, it looks like I got this part filled in. So as we look at that next part in your notes, it says, in a relationship, if we are looking at this, um, 
the blank variables change in response to, so this is where we're kind of looking at our x and y, the relationship between variables, we are going to look at the dependent changes in response to, and in this case, another variable, the independent. Which one's independent, x or y? Independent is always x, right? Dependent is always y. That's why we always say a relationship between variables, that's why we call our change in y over change in x because we're looking at the dependent over our independent. The values that are independent, those are our inputs. We also said our inputs are actually our, I think we are looking at our inputs, those were our x values, right? So independent x, inputs x, output y, dependent is y. It says a function is relation with the pairs of inputs with exactly one output. So that was that last joke sheet we had to do. Okay, so the linear function is a function whose graph is, and we just answered these questions, so Jeremy, the graph is what? Straight line, right? A table is going to show repeated, in this case we are going to be looking at addition, and my hint would be, you could say addition or subtraction, right, in the Y column, it shows that it's repeatedly doing that, notice, okay? And equations can be written in that form. We just said that one also. That's our y equals the mx plus b. Any function that is not linear is called linear Non-linear. Non -linear. They don't make it hard. They don't call it not linear. They call it non-linear. So it's linear and non-linear. So if it's a straight line, it's linear. If it's not a straight line, it's non-linear. It can be a curve. It can be any kind of thing for it to be non-linear if we are looking at that. So on the top of the next page of your notes. Right now we're on six, right? So determining if a function is linear as you take a look at your notes. So um, this table and graph show the relationship between the number of photos, x, Okay, so that's our x over here, our number of photos that we are looking at, number of photos, that is our x, and the number, uh, amount of memory y that is left on your camera memory chip. So one hint is when you're doing these, making sure that you're putting your x and y axis. So before you put the x right behind here, please put a y up here. Notice this is a broken graph here because they're going from 5, 12, then it looks like it's like five, another 509, 506. How can I get those numbers? I can look at this table, right? So at zero was 512, at one it was 509, two was 503, three. And so in this table, when I look at this table down here, I'm noticing that my x values are increasing by one, my independent increases by one, my dependent is going down by three, which means is this a function? Does each input have an output? Yes. Yeah, it's a function, right? So if we're answering this first question, we're going to put yes. The reason that yes is a function, each input has one output, if we are looking at that. Stephen, question. How is 0, 5, 12? So that means um, if you haven't taken any pictures, you have 5, <coughs> 12 megabytes of All in zero. Okay? So we're going to fill this part in. Yes, each input, <coughs> each photo you take. There's only one amount of memory, so this is a function. Each input has an output. Is it linear? Yes. Yeah, it looks pretty linear, right? If we were looking at this one down here, we can see that it's repeatedly subtracting three. Okay? So someone said, yeah, but that's not addition. We said it has to be adding. Well, that's the same as adding a negative three. Okay? So is it linear? Yes. Why? It looks like a straight line. You could give me that for a reason. You could just say, Looks like there's a straight line. That'd be a good reason. The other thing, if I look at the table, so the graph is a straight line. The table shows repeated addition. We're adding negative 3 each time. So those would be your reasons today when you're telling me if it's linear or not and why. Okay? So, on the top of the next, or that next part down. As we are taking a look, yeah, don't get out of your chair yet. Stay where you're at. We are going to be looking at the number of rectangles. So please put one rectangle, two, three, and four. That's what this picture shows us. It says, what is the perimeter? 
The perimeter of this first rectangle, this side is six and one. This side is also six and one, which makes it a perimeter of 14. Please, before you leave to go to lunch, fill in two and three. If you get to four, that'd be awesome. So 14, 16, 18, 20. So when we are looking at it, we are going to be asked to use a table of graph or an equation to model our situation. And then we're going to analyze it. In this case, it says analyze your model. Is it a function? If so, what kind? So if we are going to plot these points, so please go to 1 at 14, okay? So put a point at 114. Our next point is going to be at 216, 318, 420. So we would think if we have five rectangles or six rectangles, right? Please do yours at the same time. Sorry. Please do yours at the same time. So that as we are looking at this, so does this model, would you say, you looking at the table, does it show continued addition in our Y column? Are we adding the same thing? Yeah, it looks like we're adding two each time, right? Yeah. So if we're looking at a table, it looks linear. If we look at the graph of it, it looks linear. So it says, as we are looking at this, the next question says, analyze your model and is it a function or is it, so is it a function for some? Does each input give us an output? Mm -hmm. Yes. The next question, what kind of function? Should it be linear or nonlinear? In our case, this is definitely going to be linear if we are looking at that. So you want to write down that we are looking at a linear function because it shows the adding in our table. We're always adding two if we look at that. And if we look at our graph, we have a straight line when we graph it. We now want to come up with an equation. So we need to think, okay, in our table zero, and if we continue this line with our straight line, at zero it should be what? If we are adding two each time, we're going to go back two. Now you can't really have zero rectangle and have a perimeter, but if we are using this for a pattern to come up with an equation, if we go back from 14 to, it does give us 12. So 12 is my y-intercept, and my rate of change was 2, so my equation is going to be y equals 2x plus 12. So you haven't written that yet, and you're looking at it. So key thing is a linear function, the table shows continued addition, the graph shows us a straight line, and then we have our equation. <laughs> the next part in your notes, it asks you to determine if it is a function or not. So as we take a look at the top of that next page, first off, determine if it's a function. If it is, you're going to tell me linear or nonlinear. So does each input give us an output? First one, we would say yes. function. So you want to make sure you're telling me the word function or not a function, okay? So we're going to have function for this first one. The next thing we're going to put after function, we're going to tell us if it's linear or nonlinear. So again, if I'm looking, is there continued addition? Yes. So this looks to be linear. And that says explain. We are adding what number each time? So always adding Three. <coughs> so I want you to look at the next four on here and think first, is it just a function or not? So it's always going to be function or not a function. That's going to be your first part. And then you're going to tell me either linear or nonlinear. So if we are taking a look, this first one, does it pass a vertical line test? No. Definitely not. So we're going to say not a function, right? So we start off with not function, right? Is it linear? Yes. The whole thing with like one straight line? No. No, not linear. Because it comes in two pieces when we look at that. And the reason, not a straight line, right? On the test, I will give you something like this too, and I will ask you for reasons each time. So 
Is it a function, yes or no? Why? Your JavaScript has an output. Is it linear? Yes or no? Give the reason why. Not a straight line for this one. So if I'm answering that last one, Kyle, start me off. Function or not a function? Does each input x have one output? It has the vertical line. <coughs> what do you think? Yes. Function. Okay. Next, we are going to be taking a look, Cassidy. What do you think? Linear or nonlinear? Linear. This makes a nice straight line. No, no, no. Does it look like a straight line? No. Yes. No. Yes. So <laughs> is it linear? No. This would be nonlinear. Okay, so you're going to look at the graph, and our reason for it being nonlinear, it would be what? Hmm? Why nonlinear? Because what? Exists in whatever? Not a straight line. Not a straight line, as we are looking at that. Okay? So make sure you have those down. As you are taking it that last page of your notes. Can take up one more page of notes, don't you? Yes. You have to do it. Ah, here it is. So, in summary, when you analyze a graph, how do you know if it is linear? What I'm looking for you to put down, how do we know it is linear? Straight line, otherwise you're going to put nonlinear, right Cassidy? Okay, so take a look at the line. Straight line, linear, not a straight line, nonlinear. When we look at a table, how do we know if it is linear? <laughs> if it shows repeatedly adding or subtracting, Adding a positive number or adding a negative number for both the x and y variables. Linear, otherwise not linear. And in that last one, if we are analyzing the equation, how do we know if it's linear? Equation in slope-intercept form, otherwise it is not linear. And the key thing is, the other thing I want you to put with this, variables to the first power. So if I'm looking at examples of equations that are nonlinear, let me break this down also. Equations that are nonlinear. You might have something like y equals x squared. Right? That's going to be nonlinear because x is to the second power. You might have an equation where it says y equals 2 to the x power. Jack, you write me? 2 to the x is going to be nonlinear. You might have something like y equals 4 divided by x. And so it's, yeah, but they're both to the first power. But remember, if this is x down here to the first, if you move it up to the numerator using our rules of exponents, what would this actually be? This would actually be y equals 4 times x to what power? If it's 1 down here, what happens when we move it up? We do the reciprocal. It would be negative 1. This is definitely nonlinear. These are the same thing. So anytime you are trying to decide linear or nonlinear, slope-intercept form is generally always linear. But if you have anything that is not to the first power, which this x, even though in the denominator it's to the first, the numerator is not. So what you're going to be taking a look at is your homework. 